get something straight. We know each other well. We're not old friends. He just still does not consider him an old friend, so that remains consistent. Although it's not as good as a face-to-face -face meeting, I'm very happy to see my old friend. So there you have Chinese President Xi Jinping calling President Biden an old friend ahead of uh, last night's virtual meeting. Despite the administration insisting they are not, in fact, friends, critics are now claiming last night's summit was all show, while a senior official described the event as a healthy debate. They talked apparently for three hours. Uh, Wisconsin Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher, a member of the House Armed Services Committee. How are you, sir? Good day to you. Um, this is our understanding with regard to COVID that the pandemic, the pandemic was mentioned only briefing, uh, briefly rather, and the origins never came up. I just want to show you this picture. I guess th this would be my first question uh, as an American president. Uh, President G, why is my Secretary of State sitting to my left wearing a mask? Well, the whole thing was absolutely absurd. It was as if President Biden got into a time machine and tried to go back to 2010, back to the Obama administration's failed cooperative approach to China. The entire 3.5 hour conversation seemed designed to find common ground where, quite fr frankly, very little exists because General Secretary Xi Jinping is not interested in cooperating. And for Biden to abandon aggressive competition in favor of cooperation is not only profoundly naive, it's also dangerous because it will do nothing to stop their military expansion, their destruction of the environment, or their ongoing genocide. And just look at the more important summit that happened last week in Scotland at COP26, where we signed on to a heavily lopsided agreement. And in the process, John Kerry threw the Uyghurs under the bus because they believe that somehow she and China are interested in combating climate change. They aren't. It's quite literally a waste of carbon to negotiate with them. And apparently um, you know, the genocide wasn't given much attention last night either of the Uyghurs. No, they talked they talk vaguely about human rights concerns. Um, they, to the extent Taiwan was mentioned, my understanding is that it was Xi who was very aggressive in saying if you play with fire with respect to Taiwan, you'll get burned. It was really a missed opportunity for Biden not only to press on the origins of COVID, as Bill, you point out, but also to tell the uh, Chinese regime that we will be engaging in a diplomatic boycott of the Olympics, in large part because of their ongoing genocide, that the Biden administration itself has confirmed. And it's very absurd for them and for major American corporations sponsoring the Olympics to proceed as if this is just business as usual, and in the process, give Xi Jinping a massive propaganda victory. Yeah, yeah it's, you make an amazing point there, and, and well taken. 150 countries from around the world are going to go there. What are they going to do? I mean, I mean, the world's been living with this thing for two years. Uh, I'm not opposed in any way these two men talking. They can talk for six hours or nine or 12, talk for a day and a half if you want. But I just think as a country and as a world, we should know where this pandemic came from, period, full stop. I agree 100%. Uh, we are engaged in multiple efforts here on the Hill to force the administration to, if nothing else, declassify intelligence related to the origin of the pandemic provide us with all the documentation on U.S. Uh, government taxpayer-funded grants that went to gain-of-function research with the Wu in cooperation with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But thus far, we have gotten very little to no cooperation from the NIH, from USAID, and from the intelligence community. And that's, quite frankly, unacceptable. We need to do better. This pandemic has completely upended our lives, and we need to get to the bottom of it, if for no other reason that that is our best chance to prevent a future pandemic from similarly disrupting our entire lives. Just maybe like zoom out a little bit in terms of the big picture here. It seems to me that China, at least maybe they talk a good game, but they seem quite aware of their position in the world, where they want to go. They obviously don't have a system like ours where everybody gets a say. And they're fully focused on the competition with the United States. Do you believe that the administration has the same sort of focus when it comes to China? 
No, I don't. I believe uh, that while they have prioritized China as the biggest challenge we face, increasingly it seems to me that the John Kerry wing of the administration, which believes in contrast that climate change is the biggest threat we face, is gaining ground over more realistic voices within the administration. And look no further than the fact that the State Department is encouraging our diplomats not to use the phrase malign Chinese influence in any official document or communication. Look at the fact that the Defense Department right now is sort of walking away from great power competition as a way to describe what we're doing. And moving more towards something along the lines of durable coexistence or responsible competition or the fact that we can compete and cooperate at the same time. All of this, I think, amounts to a more cooperative and naive approach to China. And that's really what concerns me, as well as the fact that we know that as a matter of his own personal legacy, Xi Jinping wants to effectuate reunification of Taiwan with the mainland and has said they're willing to use force if necessary. And I fear all of this is going to come to a head shortly after they get that massive propaganda win at, with the Olympics, the Olympics in 2022 and he eliminates his uh, any, any constraints on a third term. Well, that's a big list. Sir, thank you for your time. Mike Gallagher, the Republican from the state you. of Wisconsin. Wisconsin's in the news today, as you well know. Uh, listen, we need an answer, otherwise we're letting down six billion people, including the Chinese people. Mike Gallagher, thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.